Um, instead of giving you a very boring definition of each of the terms, I um, like to use animal pictures. Um, and I, I think it, it also helps the understanding. So I will go through them rather quickly, but I just want to give you an idea of the, the privacy um, range we see here. Um, and that it's more than just confidentiality. So, uh, so a question. Um, yes. Before going into the, into the different terms, um, a question sure. coming from the Q&A. Um, so how would you differentiate privacy and security threat modeling? Uh, so the focus uh -huh. on security engineering versus privacy engineering. Yes. Well, I actually have a slide on this after my categories. Okay. Um, is yeah, that OK if I thing. come back yeah, to sure. that? That's OK, right. perfect. Um, so I. I wanted to give you some, some background on the different categories so you already get a feeling of that it's still some, somewhat different, although there's a lot of similarity, of course. Um, so identifiability and linkability are quite related. Often linkability leads to identifiability. Um, so identifiability does not mean you know the social security number. It means that you know then you can link it to the natural person. So it's often enough that you have a couple of properties, quasi or, or uh, quasi identifiers that you can link together that provide enough information to know who it is. In this picture, when I talk about the, the yellow duckling, then you all know um, which one I'm talking about without knowing it's well, so social security number would be weird, but DNA sequencing or whatever. Um, there's also a different kind of linkability, which is less about identifiability, um, more about a more societal aspect, and that's linking multiple individuals together based on one or several properties. Like you have all these dogs that are connected to the same person. Um, when you talk about linkability um, of, diff of, of different individuals to the same property, it can be um, people who live in the same neighborhood and have the same type of disease um, that could have some impact on the fees that an insurance company would ask because certain areas would have a higher risk of a certain disease. So that's more the societal impact than an individual privacy impact. Then non-repudiation, which is an interesting one when you come from security. Um, so non-repudiation is a security um, requirement, while it's an, a, a threat, a risk for um, privacy. So from a privacy perspective, perspective, you sometimes want plausible deniability. When you are um, voting, when you're building a whistleblowing system, for certain things, you would want to have plausible deniability. Will this often conflict security? Well, I never came across a system so far that has both plausible deniability requirements and non-repudiation requirements from a um, security perspective. You either are building something that really requires um, non-repudiation and, and secure logging and those kind of things, at least for one property um, or one type of data, you will not have the same plausible deniability requirement there. Detectability for the security people, it's kind of related to side channel attacks. So it's detecting that something is there without actually having access to the data, but you can deduce a lot of information from it. Like the picture, you don't see the animal, but you are pretty certain it's a snail. Um, so the typical example there is that when you query a database um, and you don't have permission for the, the files, depending on the access control system, it will just say zero found, or it might return the, the result saying three files found, but you cannot access them. By knowing that the files exist, you already know 
something when it's you're looking for a certain name in the database of a rehab facility just by knowing that the files exist you can assume that that person has been there okay so disclosure of information this one is borrowed from stride it's a security property which is also important for privacy and it's basically about protecting your assets um, access control encryption those kind of things and then you have the more soft categories, which are unawareness and non-compliance. Um, so it's related to, to um, transparency to the user. It's related to um, legislation, privacy reg um, and data protection legislation. Um, we kind of shifted in Linden Go. Um, where we have an awareness being more about data subject rights. So in addition to transparency, it's also related to intervenability. And also in Linden Go, the uh, non-compliance really shifted to the processing principles. Um, so just already some heads up that there might be a change when you look at the, the, the Linden knowledge base and the Linden Go knowledge base. <clears throat> 